I'd like to start out by talking about a recently invented machine, the Segway, a human transport device, a sophisticated scooter. Many thought the Segway would change the world. It is wonderfully engineered, but Segway has not lived up to, the, to its hype, and some feel the company is about to go out of business. What went wrong was how the Segway was marketed. The best, most useful device in the world can be put on the market, and it may not become a successful product. Great engineering won't make a product successful. The core of marketing concerns human behavior. It is hard, nearly impossible, to change human behavior. Yes, people will buy a better mousetrap, but that is because their behavior doesn't have to change. They are already using mousetraps. Before the release of the Segway, people weren't using human transport devices. In order to get them to buy one, their behavior had to be changed. None of the Segway marketers tried to do that. Now let's look at a machine that is not so new. The sewing machine. People started sewing as early as 20,000 years ago during the last ice age. Archaeologists have discovered bone needles with eyes used to sew together skins and furs dating back to this time. So sewing is a behavior that people already have. It took about 1,500 years to invent a machine that could do this task for humans. The first work workable machine was invented in 1790 by Thomas Saint. Many inventors improved Saint's machine, most notably Walter Hunt of New York in 1834, Elias Howell of Massachusetts in 1846. Howe was unsuccessful in marketing the device in America, so Howe went to England to adapt his machine for an English corset maker. So by 1851, all the engineering was in place for the sewing machine. Isaac Singer put this engineering together with marketing and brought the machine to the public. Parts of Singer's new machines were based on Howe's work. In fact, Singer was sued by Howe for infringement of patent rights, but a compromise was reached where Singer paid a royalty. Singer added a foot pedal, replacing the earlier hand crank. But what Singer had was marketing genius. Singer went on to found a company that became the world's largest manufacturer of sewing machines by 1860. He was awarded 20 additional patents, spent millions of dollars advertising his machine, and initiated a system of providing service with sales. Singer sewing machines were being sold in opulent showrooms. The $75 to $125 price was high for its time. Most American families made about $500 a year. Singer introduced the installment plan to America and sold thousands of his machines in this way. For the first time, a machine made its way into the homes of Americans. Marketing the sewing machine was very successful. The sewing machine promised a revolution in household labor. Dubbed the Queen of Inventions in 1860, the machine offered women a relief from the countless hours and tedium of hand sewing. With the opening of the West by the late 19th century, many pioneer families made sure there was room on the wagon for the sewing machine. For families who had neither res the resources nor the access to ready-made clothing, homemade clothing remained the norm. The first electric machines came out in the 1920s. Electric power was an ergonomic improvement from the early hand cranks or the later foot pedaled treadle machines. Electric machines could sew faster and women could get more work done. This became a compelling reason for trading the old machines in for an electric one. But sewing machines can last over a hundred years. I sew on an electric machine that was manufactured in 1947. Sewing machine manufacturers had to find a way to sell machines to people like me that already have one. An old machine sold just as well as a new one, so it was never obsolete. This lack of obsolescence is the reason that machine manufacturers have added features, stitches, and options over the years. Just like the early sewing machines, marketing is critical to how the engineering evolved. I'll conclude the video with a Singer marketing advertisement from the early days of television. Singer is trying a strategy that may have worked well for the Segway. If you try it, then you're going to want to buy one. And word of mouth is very powerful in advertisements. Perhaps if Segway had tried to get more people on their scooters, they would have had more success as well. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Walter O'Keefe turning the microphone over to the cat. Take it away, kitty. John, I'm so discouraged. 
How can I ask anybody to this house the way the furniture looks? Well, it is pretty awful. But I don't suppose we could buy much with our money. Not unless a miracle happens. Ah, there's the miracle. Hurry, 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 hurry. Answer that doorbell. That's the first time I ever saw a miracle in a two-pants suit. But it's the singer man. He'll send her to the nearest singer sewing center, and the miracle man turns her over to that miracle woman, the sewing teacher, to you. Just a few simple lessons on the sewing machine, and her house will look so attractive they'll probably sell it at a profit. And why not? It's a cinch, and it's a lot of... Now take a look at the finished room with the rest of the girls she's invited over. You don't mean to tell me these draperies, curtains, and slip covers yourself. How did you ever make them so perfectly? It's a grand color scheme. They must have cost a pretty penny. Only $18.31. What? Say, I wish I could sew like that. But you can, Martha. What's that? The address of the nearest Singer Sewing Center. Get it? 